Yes or no? <laughs> all right, is everybody ready? Thank you all for being here. Certainly this year we have had a number of conversations about public safety and how we address violent crime in our community, how we address nuisances. But another part of a conversation that is vital for us is how do we make sure we're preventing crime? How do we make sure that we are preventing challenges to people on the streets each day? And how are we actually making sure that we're addressing the quality of life issues that plague so many Kansas Cityans each and every day? Today, we announce an innovative program that looks to make a difference in the life of so many people in Kansas City some of whom are on our streets today, others of whom are just looking for opportunities, for work, for health care, for assistance, and for support. We talk all the time about how there isn't just one solution to how we build a safer and healthier city for all. And I agree with that. Just this morning, we had the police department in front of us who noted when talking about community engagement that there are a lot of actors, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of programs that are vital to making sure we have a safer, healthier, and better city. Today, I'm proud to be part and one of the co-sponsors of an ordinance that I think will allow this city and the city council to take a transformative step in that effort, a pre-arrest diversion program known as REACH. What that program does is looks to make sure that we're providing support and resources to treat and heal underlying issues that cause individuals to commit low-level offenses, knowing that if they get that treatment, they are less likely to offend in the future. And I'll just go off script a little bit and note at one time where this situation might have come up. Last summer I was getting calls from a Brookside property owner who said every day there was someone who was sleeping in front of their establishment. And they kept emailing us on council, they talked to KCPD, they said any number of things. What's the best way to address that issue? You can arrest the person again and again and again and they get right back out and you have the same issue or perhaps they go sleep somewhere else on the streets or you can find a place for that person to live. You can help that person find a job. You can help that person find resources. That fundamentally is what this program is about. If passed, this program would be housed in Kansas City's Health Department and overseen by a pre-arrest diversion coordinator who would be responsible for developing the program, making sure they submit annual reports, doing all of the audits, all of the work that is vital in this. And more than anything, making sure that individuals in crisis would be connected to appropriate services behavioral health services, housing, and other basic needs. In creating this ordinance, we worked with a number of Kansas Cityans, and I want to give a special shout out to a group by the name of Decarcerate KC. We have not always agreed, and we won't always agree in the future. But what co-governance in Kansas City means is that you work with everyone to make sure that we can do what's best for all of our constituents. I thank Decarcerate for reaching out to me. I think everybody who said we can do better by our sisters and brothers, particularly those who are on the streets. This is a program that's been successful in a number of communities. Atlanta, Georgia, Tucson, Arizona, Tarrant County, Texas, Tallahassee, Florida. And by the way, Georgia, Texas, Arizona, Florida, those aren't crazy lefty places. What this is is something that no matter your politics, no matter how you feel about anything under the sun, is doing right by the people. The Tallahassee Police Department reported that they have diverted over 1,000 offenders in the first three years of their pre-arrest diversion program. Of the nearly 80% of diverted offenders, pardon me, 80% of those diverted offenders have successfully completed the program and only 6% were rearrested. Let me say that again, 1,000 offenders, only 6% rearrested. Compare that, and for those who've done police ride-alongs like I have, Compare that to what we see in Kansas City each and every day, where we have people arrested again and again and again. But fundamentally what this recognizes is the City Council is addressing all challenges. We're talking about police budget. We're talking about pay increases for the police. We're talking about incarceration in the future and, and rehabilitation. But we also understand that prevention, prevention is the most important step of all. It is fiscally responsible strategy to address mental health recidivism, incarceration, and fentanyl overdoses by really looking at prevention first. And this program, by the way, this ordinance proposes $1.266 million plus another $500,000 of housing services. So for less than $2 million, think about the Tallahassee program. That's a thousand people getting opportunities for care, for housing, for services. That is a lot cheaper than a $317 million budget for enforcement or a $200 million jail. 
This is just one small step in doing what's right. In connection with that, I want to thank my council colleagues who are co-sponsors in supporting this initiative. And I'll start with the Mayor Pro Tem of Kansas City, Raina Park Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am honored to be a co-sponsor on this pre-arrest diversion program. This time last year, uh, the City Council made an unprecedented step of investing $30 million for violence prevention, showing that we prioritize prevention and addressing the root causes of what causes people to even commit crimes in the first place. This is a second step that we are taking as a policy, creating a policy that will help address the root causes and issues that people have in our city. You also are aware of my work uh, in the houseless prevention space and addressing those issues as well. And unfortunately, as the mayor, mayor provided an, a story, unfortunately we see far too many stories like that where we know that our, many of our unhoused individuals actually sometimes commit crimes to, so that they can find a, a warm shelter, a warm bed, and, uh, and three meals so that they can um, move their life forward in a way and in, in, in a way, because unfortunately they don't have uh, the resources that they need. This program will allow them to be able to, to gain the resources and support that they need so that they no longer have to commit those crimes. Uh, it, it also will allow us to, to divert individuals from a jail. That has been uh, a primary is, issue that has come up in this council and will continue to be an issue for years to come. But I am hopeful with the success that we've seen in other cities that this REACH program will truly make a positive impact to our residents and those who need it most. I want to thank uh, Decarcerate KC and also want to thank Councilman John Jonathan Duncan for all of his work in putting this together. And I'll allow him to speak next. Thank you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here today. For far too long in Kansas City and in many nations across our nation, we have focused our resources towards systems of punishment and have failed to fund systems of care that build up our communities. We have overburdened our courts, our jails, our first responders by forcing them to address issues they are not equipped to handle. Folks who need mental health treatment, food, and a place to stay at night. Many of our most vulnerable residents find themselves trapped in a vicious cycle that is both costly and inhumane. As the same people are moved through these systems without treatment again and again and again. One person from our court told me that recently because we do not provide the tools needed to treat these folks that we have committed them to a slow suicide. I am proud to introduce legislation for a proactive public safety initiative that will aim to address the root causes of these issues and divert people towards the resources they actually need to create systems of care instead of continuing the status quo of punishment. Based on recommendations from the Alternatives Incarceration Commission, thank you so much, Decarcerate KC, and modeled off best, past, excuse me, best practices of peer cities such as Atlanta and Denver, this pre-arrest diversion program, which we're calling REACH, will provide a, con a consent-based community response to non-emergency community disturbances, such as someone experiencing a mental health crisis, asking for food or water, or simply si sleeping on the street. This legislation will reduce our call for volume for our 911 dispatchers, as we will be directing folks to call 311 instead. Um, the mayor provided an example where someone's sleeping um, on the stoop of a business. Uh, 911 isn't needed to call uh, for that type of response. Uh, 311 is who you should be calling. Um, so this will reduce the call volume from our 911 dispatchers and lighten the load of our police force, which we heard from today, talking about how our CIT officers and others are overburdened with calls, and that prevents them from doing more community policing. This program will help our small business owners who often bear the brunt of these issues, but do not have the tools to address them. Most importantly, this program will work to break the vicious cycle so many, so many of our most vulnerable residents are trapped in. Our people don't need more punishment. They need more investment. And it bears repeating that we fund what we value. So it is my sincere hope that my city council colleagues pass this legislation and doing so show that we value our people. Um, much 
Much accolades have been given to the curse rate KC, which are standing behind me. And at this time, I want to turn it over to one of their leaders, Kiro, uh, to provide testimony. My name is Kiro Lavelli. I go by he, him pronouns, and I'm a proud leader with Decarce Ray KC. For over a month, I've been coming down here to meet with members of city council and other city staff to discuss our vision for a new community response and pre-arrest diversion program. I grew up and live off of Prospect on 43rd Street. Every day I see needs in my community that go unmet. These needs often lead to a cycle of mental health crisis, housing instability, and incarceration. My cousin was recently in the city jail for a theft related to his mother being stranded. I know that if his needs were met sooner, he would not have been in a place where arrest and jail were considered the only option. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about our vision for REACH KC. R-E-A-C-H stands for Responding with Empathetic Alternatives and Community Health. This program will be the first of its kind in Kansas City and will create a community health response model with teams designated by the KC's Health Department in order to connect people with resources they need instead of sending them to jail. The R-E-A-C-H program will provide a hotline that connects people in need with housing, mental health care, and other essential services. We are proud to have worked on an ordinance that will create a REACH as a new program within the Kansas City Health Department. We have a vision. We know that we keep us safe. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for anybody? Sir, would you mind spelling your name for us before you step away? K-E-R-O. Last name Lavelli, L-A-V-E-L-I. Thank you. Yeah. What will the police role look like uh, in this moment? In, in this situation, I think there's always an expectation to work with the Kansas City Police Department, but really this is a, a separate program in, in many ways. This is saying that we will use our city resources, our nonprofit partners who are already doing a lot of the work to help that person who is unhoused, for example, find a place to be and to go. And so while some cities have a co-responder model where you have officers that are responding with folks, we want to make sure that our first responders and officers have their opportunity to be giving response to the unfortunately high number of violent calls we have, other incidents, and where a lot of these calls, thousands each year, either have to wait a few hours to get some response or never really have the issue addressed long term. So we're looking to have folks, and this is what this ordinance is about, funding people who can go out, who can help people, who can assist them, and who can help that person who needs housing, that person who needs resources, address it. There will still be police responding to violent calls in Kansas City each and every day, and other calls. Every call that can go to the police can continue to go to the police. We're making sure that we have an alternative path for folks to call 311, particularly when they're seeing these ongoing, pardon me, <clears throat> quality of life issues. And, and I'll give one example. I, you know, in all of our neighborhoods probably, you may walk by or drive by somebody every day. When I stayed at 19th and Paseo, there was a man on the corner every day, lived there, dealt with any number of issues. And what did we do? We just kept going by too often. This allows somebody to call 311 and say, perhaps this is a person who needs some sort of quality of life assistance. That's what this is about, and this is something that we have seen work effectively in other cities around our country. If I remember correctly, and I'll, I'll spitball and he'll nudge me if I'm wrong on it, this should be, I believe, 8 or to 10, 12. I, I was going to get there if I keep going two up. So 12 initial staffers in the health department, but I think the most important part of all, so the 12 staffers, by the way, include a coordinator for the program, which is going to be vital to how they stand this up. But another important part of this, which is part of the ordinance where we look to expand it, is access to many of the services we're already funded. So Kansas City, for example, is an extensive conversation about low barrier shelter. How do somebody who's on the streets right now have somewhere to go? We look to have this program link a lot of these folks with it because, frankly, a lot of these folks now are ones who, if we can't find them shelter, as the councilman and mayor pro tem noted, this is somebody who's getting cited or arrested for trespass. This is somebody who is looking for food in some situations, some level of income 
that runs into any number of petty offenses or ordinance violations. And so for us, we think this investment of 12 people at the beginning is something that first will have an impact on hundreds, if not thousands, but it's also a program that we hope to have grow. If you look at cities like Atlanta, Tallahassee, as was mentioned before, you have dozens of staff, you're impacting thousands of people, and my hope is that Frankly, we don't see that many municipal offenses in the future. We don't see that much need for municipal incarceration because we're actually addressing the issues on the front end. Are the bills fair to pass this, or is it something you're still working on? Uh, you know, look, this was just introduced today. I, what I have seen from the City Council is that this is a compassionate group. In recent weeks, we've stood up for language access, for immigrants, for housing, violence prevention, as the Mayor Pro Tem noted. This is the sort of thing that this Council is all about. So I have every bit of confidence that this will pass likely to be heard in committee two weeks from now, uh, and then we look for passage the next day. Uh, where would the reach center be located? So that is something that we're directing the city manager to explore. First, of course, we're using 311. That exists here in City Hall, so we have one resource already. We do look to have a resource that's in the community. That's part of what we'll do, make sure we're saving funds for the taxpayers. We'll first look at city-owned property in our community, uh, but I would expect it to be an area that has a few important things access to good bus transportation, access to health care and other facilities. And so there are corridors of this city throughout Prospect, Troost Avenue, and others where we've been able to establish centers like this, and I think that might be where we start on some of our looking. All right? How much money is in the budget for so right, so, so this, this proposal is $1.26 million to just stand up for staff uh, and other operations. An additional $500,000 is anticipated to support low barrier housing and other resources almost immediately from passage. And that's not that much. If we can change 1,000 lives for $1.66 million, uh, pardon me, $1.76 million, I think it would suggest to us that we're, that we're really having a successful program so we hope not so much that the cost grows necessarily, but certainly that the service does over the years. All right? Yes? The, the first phase, it says identify hotspots. You have an idea where those are in the city. Can you just yes, can touch on it? Yeah, yeah. So, so this will be a, a pilot program at its very beginning. We want to make sure that it's built up to scale at a good pace. The priority areas for uh, support services will be the Prospect Avenue corridor the greater downtown area plan, so that encompasses most of downtown Crossroads Riverfront area, and then working in alignment with the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority. I have seen, you have seen, we've all heard reports about any number of incidents on the buses. We want to make sure that we're giving that support so that, again, we address the quality of life issue so the person can ride the bus safely, getting the care that they need. So working with KCATA downtown in the Prospect Corridor where we look to start, but certainly I expect this in short order to be a program for the entire city. All right, thank you. Thank you.